This is why India is going to become the next fatty liver capital of the world if you're not already there. Uh, how does one prepare themselves on a mindset level to really kind of go towards nutrition and spend their money on nutrition? Do you know I prescribe potatoes to children, but I don't prescribe French fries because French fries is now processing it in oil, and I don't give a packet of chips because now that is processed. Fried, baked, put into a plastic bag with salt, with preservative, and then coming to you 16 months later. What is wrong with the Indian diet? My nutritional habits today are worse than my grandfather's nutritional habits in terms of choices of food, availability of food, chemical insecticides and pesticides upon my food. Did you know that taking calcium when you don't require it in certain women? who have the breast cancer gene and a calcium excess absorption gene will actually trigger breast cancer every supplement has a side effect but every supplement has a healing power in it also the problem in today's world is people are self prescribing the problem in today's world the dietitians of the world know nothing about supplements doctors know nothing about supplements because they are not taught supplements in medical college in mbbs figure out if you're a morning owl or a late night but get 7 hours of sleep no matter what time you go to sleep think if people just understand the science behind what to eat when to eat and how much to eat they have already won the game of life once i went to a rural area and they did pani ka tadka it's okay to have a reward meal go to a maximum level of 30% and the remaining 70% of your nutrition should be boring should be home cooked should be organic and should take you to that next level Welcome to the Journey Within podcast with me Shobha Rana. This is a podcast where we try to find a deeper meaning to life through uh the conversations with our guests, the experiences that they have lived, the insights and wisdom that they have to share. We try to understand that how do we really function in our inner world because that is where we process our thoughts, feelings and emotions and that is what builds our perspective and mindset towards life. So let's conquer our lives and our inner world through the Journey Within podcast. today we have tried to decode nutrition in depth for you uh we have discussed the indian meal the indian diet we have also tried to discuss uh, the supplements and the food that can enhance your uh, cognitive powers your memory your remembrance uh, and your uh, mental capacity we have also discussed upon the various trends those are floating across internet that we seek learning from how dangerous are they and a lot of such in depth understanding of nutrition in this episode of the journey within podcast I'm particularly excited about today's episode because nutrition as a topic is very close to my heart and today we've got a celebrity nutritionist in the house. He is someone who has helped uh, people from Bollywood, the world of sports, politics, etc., the big names like Virat Kohli, Shahid Kapoor, Anupam Kher, etc., to transform their diet and nutrition and be a healthier version of themselves, be at the top performance game of their life. So please welcome Ryan Fernando to the Journey Within podcast. <laughs> Hey Shobha thank you for having Hi, me Ryan. here today Hi Ryan it's such a pleasure to uh, meet you here and uh, you know today I'm really excited because nutrition is such an important part of our lives and you know they say we are what we eat and there's a lot of truth to that so I want to uh, start with the questions and my first question to you is that what is wrong with the indian diet You know, there's a lot of uh, these concepts coming in where you are measuring calories, you are you're measuring your food, and you know you're eating by by taking how many grams of this and that and blah blah blah. So, what is not good with the Indian diets? What is wrong with the Indian diets? So, Shobha, I think I'll just rewind slightly. There is uh, no problem with the Indian balanced diet from wherever you come as a culture. It's actually lifestyles have changed. Recent consumption survey says for forty rupees out of hundred rupees that we are spending on food, out of that forty rupees, ten rupees eighty paisa is going towards processed foods and beverages, and only three rupees eighty paisa is going towards vegetables. Our dadi maas would have spent ten rupees on vegetable. and maybe only 50 or 60 paisa on these aerated beverages and processed foods and juices so because of the migration to urban areas the women coming to work in the workplace lesser time for food preparation the convenience factors have changed in the last 40 years and as a result we have shifted from tiffin ka dabba to eating out more often and 
also industry has begun to use lesser of the traditional oils in the food preparation even in restaurants and migrated to palm oil so the indian diet has not changed what has changed is the indian urban story has changed and as a result of that indian sto story changing we are getting more prosperous but when we decide to eat food we are eating from a perspective of uh you know i'm very tired i worked very hard um i'm i'm constantly on the go and moving and all of that stuff i'm answering whatsapp messages as, as lightning thunder so even till late night we are constantly on a high stress mode so when you are in a high stress mode there is actually a research paper that has shown people when they order food or choose their meal in high stress state will take foods that are higher in sugar and higher in fat hence we are now assuming the indian diet is unhealthy but it isn't yeah that is what we hear from our elderly you know that indian diet is the best diet and uh, there are studies that prove it so as well but like you said the oils have changed the way we cook has changed uh, so we also have fried food in in our diets in the traditional diets as well uh, you know and uh, when we talk about junk food the food that we eat outside uh, i want to have this conversation about oil versus ghee also first up that uh, what should be the right you know mode of cooking should you be using oil or ghee uh, what are the benefits what are the kind of oils that one must uh, use and avoid shobha i practice um, as a nutritionist in a clinic and i have over 80 dietitians in my clinic and over the last decade and a half we have gone through thousands of people this is the first question which oil is healthy so i say to people you know what if you go back 2000 years ago we didn't eat oil as a part of a diet oil came as part of the nuts or seeds or if you ate a fruit or a vegetable or a grain there was some percentage of oil in it but as cuisine started getting better and better we started doing tadkas we started doing shallow fryings deep grilling and all of that stuff now you needed oil and over the years the population has exploded and do you know once i went to a rural area and they did pani ka tadka so people wow. who are affluent will use ghee and oil for tadka and people who are poor will use water for tadka that opened up my eyes saying that as you become more affluent we are shifting to fats for frying the food because obviously the mouth feel and the taste is better but then comes the proverbial question which is better you know when i'm sitting on the sidelines and i'm judge you know i behave like a judge i don't prosecute vegetable oils i don't defend ghee i say the human race does not need to fry their food but try and i still need to fry my food i ask you this question what your mother and dadima have taught you is only for the last 100 years of eating but if you and i went back 2000 years ago you don't you didn't squeeze out oils you had cold press oils and you didn't have copious amounts of it you may have be having 2 3 drops to use because the whole year you had only 2 liters of oil to use today we have 2 liters of oil to use in 2 weeks so my thought process is if india has to understand they need to do a genetic test because some of us are thumbs up for accepting a higher fat diet and some of us are thumbs down so there is a genetic diversity to the accepting of food second is the price of ghee is over a thousand rupees per kg in good oil, ghee and the the cost of palm oil is lesser than 150 to 200 rupees per kg shobha if you and i started a restaurant as a nutritionist i would tell you madam ji hum log ghee use karega आप बोलेगा भाई हमारा तो तड़का दाल और येलो दाल और मसूर दाल ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग विद घी द डिश विल कॉस्ट सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज विद पाम ऑयल इट विल कॉस्ट टू हंड्रेड रुपीज लेट एस गेट मोर मैक्सिम प्रॉफिट ऑल्सो पाम ऑयल इज न्यूट्रल इन फ्लेवर बिकॉज इट्स चीपर एंड न्यूट्रल इन फ्लेवर इट इज गोइंग टू बी द नेचुरल सिलेक्शन प्रोसेस फॉर ऑल द रेस्टोरेंट्स टू यूज सो एंड सिंस वी आर ईटिंग आउटसाइड पीपल आर गोइंग टूवर्ड्स you know dadi ma ate once in a quarter with grandpa mom and dad went your mom and dad my mom and dad went out on a date twice a month and ate out um we would go out five six times a month but our children's generation is going out every day that is the difference where the exposure to these oils is bad and no restaurant is using ghee so is ghee good ghee is good if you have a thumbs up gene that accepts the saturated fat my 
blanket advice to india will be no more than 15 ml of ghee in a day which is one large tablespoon isse zyada leta hai to heart ke liye dil ke liye bahut khatarnak hota hai i would also want to come to my next conversation which is about empowering the brain now now there are so many supplements and foods those are called the brain foods uh, brain boosting foods um, in fact i was uh, reading about nootropics so what is the truth behind nootropics do they really help you increase your brain's capacity memory intelligence cognitive powers i was coming to the clinic today and um, passed a one of those old zen vehicles and it had a ferrari sticker on top of it i'm like bhai ye to matlab bahut dreamer hai now putting a ferrari sticker on a zen vehicle i just smiled i smiled because i thought of the human body bhai i'm a ferrari i put a sticker on my head my brain is going to work really well lekin mera dal chawal roti hai to sasta hai what am i trying to communicate to people nootropics are enhancements to your brain but what is the foundation of the brain the brain is made up of 60% fat of which 50% is omega 3 do you know in my clinic when i practice i do a pin prick blood test and 95% of us indians have a diet deficient on the good fats going to our brain we are eating all of these vegetable and palm oils which are making us dull dull so dull yeah if people can't understand dull then it's dull my point is before you get to nootropics nootropics is the ferrari sticker the supplementation and they do work but if your base is a bad engine and you believe you put a ferrari sticker on it and you're going to press the accelerator and the engine is going to give you that response it's not going to work so where do i go with this nootropics are elements found in your diet and in your supplements and in the bacteria in your body in fact there was a research paper done on how things like brahmi ashwagandha shankar pushpi uh, shilajit all of them improve blood circulation to the brain now what do you mean by blood circulation to the brain oh the brain is this micro processor it's a super computer it's going to overheat so if you ever see a good computer they've got multiple liquid cooling fans and the 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 wires and the ram bus and everything is like wow super fast like i remember in the olden days we had a hard drive which was physical and now you have solid state drive so processing is faster all these nootropics go and make your existing genetically programmed brain power from mummy daddy ka jodi you get that sort of capability so you have a super computer up here so when people eat every day outside they are in the job let's take my camera team your camera team all our staff and everything oh sir ke liye madam ke liye bahut acha podcast we worked very hard today after this they'll go out for friday biryani lunch If you brought the biryani from home I would say yes made with love and care and the greatest amount of nutrition Now when we start eating that way 7 days a week 3 meals a day 21 exposures when none of the exposures have going to help my brain then the nootropics taking shankar pushpi ashwagandha brahmi cordyceps mushrooms lion's mane lion's mane is a type of another mushroom all that the west is talking about cannabis oils for lowering things chamomile tea to help in depression and sap- saffron kesar to help in depression all of these things are useless by if your dal chawal roti is not at premium it's like saying i go and buy a high end vehicle and i put kerosene in it the vehicle is not going to run and then when i go for a race i'm like bhai today you get high octane fuel and put it into my car but for the last one year i've been running on kerosene or paraffin or some very kachra wala fuel so people today are trying to promote nootropics like recently somebody came to me is like our probiotic is designed to help in depression i said the science is correct research has shown when you drop the rats into a tub of water they sterilize the stomach of the rats and they made them drown uh, swim till drowning right and another group of rats they gave them lactobacillus plantarius lactobacillus rhamnosus these are two bacteria they found that the rats swam longer because the probiotics fermented the food differently and gave molecules back into the blood which went to the motivational centers in the brain wow so do you know sadness depression happiness is both linked to the nutritional deficiency of vitamins like b complex 
and your minerals like magnesium, selenium, chromium and the fermented metabolites that come from these probiotics. Now people want to take supplements which is a uh, nutritional convenience for the nutritional indiscipline. It's a temporary band-aid. Work on your diet but nootropics work because I work with all the Olympic level stars including my shooters and race car drivers and we use natural nootropics to fire the brain for better accuracy, better performance, better motivation. So basically, if you, your base is not strong, which is your right nutrition, which is your basic nutrition that you're eating every day, on top of that, supplements or, or these newer uh, full power, I don't know what to call them, supplements only, will only work when your base is, is strong enough to uh, kind of take it forward. True. And you know what? All of these supplement companies that are coming out today in this world of funding, everyone gets funding few hundred crores here and there then suddenly they start telling you probiotics is very good suddenly they start telling you lion's mane mushroom is very good and who's watching and consuming all of this most of the techie guys that is what you right? know i was exactly so, coming to that a lot of information is coming to us through the internet so what are the major misconceptions what are the top three dangerous trends that you are seeing in the space of nutrition on internet number one non-medical people coming in and telling you that a supplement is good for your health this is the first danger market I recently had a top school engineer come to me and say he's the founder of an Ayurvedic startup. I recently found out that one of the leading so-called persons who claims to have a doctor in front of her name it was actually a financial banker and has gone onto the internet and got a honorarium degree from America for an Ayurvedic uh, PhD and now calls the person as a doctor. These dangerous trends are coming up where people are acquiring certification. You know what? India needs to go to people's LinkedIn profile and see their degrees and ask when they are creating these food products or food supplements. Just because you got $100 million of funding and you're successful in your previous venture doesn't mean that now you are creating something of great transcendence in the nutritional space. I believe the Ayurvedic doctors, I believe the medical doctors, I believe the researchers who are out there are qualified to advise the human race. Not the startups that come in with these um, high-end B-school degrees. By the way, I have a high-end B-school degree, but I also have a clinical biochemistry and a food biotech degree. I'm trying to communicate this to people. These startups are coming in and convincing you. I mean... Cannabis oil is coming in. The government of India has not even regulated it. And so I say, yes, I'll have that cookie. Yes, I'll use this pain oil. Yes, maybe I'll take this nutritional supplement. But for you to continuously promote it and convince general population who has not aligned their diet. In fact, recently in a forum, I was just joking with all the startup founders like, guys, you have more dietitians on your team than sales guys on your team to sell your product. Why? Because people are saying, bye. People are understanding this common sense factor. So I think we are being swayed too much by these trends of variables coming in. No? So exercise variables. Oh, this is going to change your life. It's not going to change your life. It's going to nudge you in a direction. Oh, supplements are going to change your life. No, no, no. It's going to give you the motivation to work out a little harder by taking a supplement in your workout. But it's not going to help you too much in fat loss. Fat loss is the biggest con man game on this planet. Oh, Ryan Fernando, you've done fat loss for this person, that person. I have done fat loss for celebrities because these guys work their ass off in their nutritional program and exercise program. Aam Admi wants to put one belt on, do some light or some heat waves, something, something, and then you want to lose weight. It doesn't work. Maybe you'll lose 1% of fat, but you will not lose 72 uh, kgs of fat on our 200 kg frame by just doing that. There is metabolism, there is hormones, there is blood testing, and there's intent of behavior for people to change their whole lives. Wow, there is so much that needs to be considered, you know. Uh, we are talking about supplements and supplements are uh, kind of becoming a part of our diet now. But there is also a conservative mindset that we come from. Um, 
you know, Ryan, we are talking about supplements. And if I talk about India, India's story about supplements, we come from a very conservative mindset where we are not open to the idea of compliments. I want to take your thoughts there because uh, when I have this chat with, let's say, my mother or people my age, even they say, no, we want to have everything in our diet and we don't want to consume any supplements. People my age uh, also say that. And a lot of us have these deficiencies now coming in our body because as you age, your body is not fully capable of, you know, having everything in, in order, you have hormonal changes, you have stress levels, you have so many deficiencies coming in your body. And as such, we don't have uh, you know, exposure to sunlight these days due to our, our work environments, etc. So there's so much of environmental factor also that is coming into play in kind of making and creating this deficiency in our body. And supplements uh, seemingly so are a gateway for you to kind of bridge that gap. But also this mindset again there that should we take or should we not take? I, I want to understand two things here. A, the truth of supplements, do they really work? And what are the possible side effects? And uh, should we really break through this conservative mindset of, of having supplements? So Shobha, you know, for everyone out there who asks this question, supplements, do they really work? And they have a side effect, Nene Baba, Mirko Ne Lene Kai, Mirko Natural Lene Kai. I want to take natural supplements. Rasgulla, when we eat a rasgulla, is a rasgulla a food or is rasgulla a supplement? It's a food in a manner that we're eating it, we're ingesting it in our body, but it's a supplement of sugar, excessive sugar to your body that you're kind of deteriorating your body Correct. with. Correct. Correct. So I would say you're taking supplement now from a negative, negative point, point of view. I will take supplement from a positive point of view. To make a rascula, you take a natural food. So supplement, rascula is actually a supplement. You take milk. Milk is the food. Rascula is not the food. You take milk, you process it, you boil it, you add some lemon to curdle the milk, you separate the milk, you squeeze out the, 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 the casein, which is the paneer, you process that further, you add sugar to preserve it, and because of that preservation, it doesn't get spoiled and it becomes a rascula, and when you taste it, it's like, wow, it's giving me something of happiness. Yeah. So in my book, a rascula is a supplement. Now, why did I go in this direction? Supplements are a nutritional convenience for people's nutritional indiscipline. We really don't need supplements in our life, but we require them because of our fast-paced lifestyle, our genetic anomalies because of thousands of years of maybe inbreeding. When I mean inbreeding, marrying within the same communities sometimes, and therefore the diseases get uh, compounded over a period of time and so there could be backfoots on certain genes for example anemia for example uh, a thalassemia gene many genes are there and then the third point is our lifestyle today wherein I'm not eating natural food correctly I'm just going down and eating golgappe and one kati roll or something every day after work where is the fruit where is the vegetable so there is no micronutrition only calories of protein carbs and fat coming up but micronutrition is right down so when we analyze people I like to sit as a judge in a chamber and somebody comes to me Shobha you came to me and says supplement guilty or it should be let off and I would say to you, I cannot process supplement as guilty or let off. Let's take an example of magnesium. Ryan Fernando, uh, I'm getting a lot of cramps. I'm getting a lot of headache. I'm getting a lot of constipation. Oh, let me do a blood test. Oh, you're low in magnesium. Now, foods that are high in magnesium, dark chocolate, pumpkin seeds and uh, sunflower seeds. Actually, most of your grains and vegetables and fruit should have magnesium in it because of years of farming the soil doesn't have enough of magnesium so if you look at the statistical data globally our fruits and vegetables have between 1960 and now have drastic drops in the micronutrition content in them so therefore i do a blood test and i'm aware now i have a deficiency and all of this kind of problems we're getting in modern day and age is because the food that my grandfather ate was nutritionally, micronutritionally more sound than what I eat today. My nutritional habits today are worse than my grandfather's nutritional habits in terms of choices of food, availability of food, chemical insecticides and pesticides upon my food. Therefore, now as a judge, I'm suddenly seeing that if my client has a certain nutritional deficiency, when I pass judgment and beat the gavel saying, 
दिस सप्लीमेंट इज रिक्वायर्ड बाई दिस पर्सन थर्ड पर्सन नहीं मंजूर नहीं है मंजूर नहीं है ये तो ये तो साइड इफेक्ट है ये तो नेचुरल नहीं है बट वॉट इज नेचुरल वेन आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू हैव अ डेफिशंसी सप्लीमेंट्स रिप्रेजेंट अ फूड थेरोप्यूटिक इंटरवेंशन आई रिपीट फूड थेरोप्यूटिक इंटरवेंशन टू एन एनॉमली ईदर कॉज्ड बाई योर जेनेटिक्स और योर लाइफ स्टाइल बिहेवियर हाउ एवर द सप्लीमेंट will have a side effect when you take it from a fashionability perspective a oh, mera neighbor shobha singh my neighbor is taking calcium i'll also take calcium did you know that taking calcium when you don't require it in certain women who have the breast cancer gene and a calcium excess absorption gene will actually trigger breast cancer ha ah, but gynecologists will recommend calcium blindly because he or she is taught in medical college that calcium deficiency nutritional science is changing supplement production to designated therapeutic interventions changing the problem in today's world is it's gone offline and this is where i like the government of india do you know recently government of india made all the startups in the food space remove their products on selling on the website under the fssci law fssci law because a lot of the food supplements had drug based therapeutic doses Oh wow. So Shobha you're looking at your friend she's taking calcium supplement now some startup guy has gone and made a new supplement and this new supplement has 3500 because his engineer brain is telling him oh if 2000 works well 3000 laga do and now you put 3000 because i need to be better than the other guy who's regulating all of this right so supplements now need to be assassinated because there's no prescriptive control on the recommendation of supplements so now the next question is oh i talk about let's say uh, lion's mane very good for the brain and we have a teenager around 18 19 or a young adult 18 to 22 watches all of these podcasts watches everything out there in the world and assumes that his headaches or her headaches is because they don't have these mushrooms or they don't have these psychedelics the caution here on the supplementary part is the foundation hasn't been assessed the level of education is now in question of the person self prescribing that product to them the side effect that would happen will come from everything you drink too much of water you can damage your kidneys right like i know people who drink 6 7 water liters of water a day and then after 6 years they have damaged their kidneys right the human body was not designed to drink so much water but is water dangerous water is also a supplement no you get water remember let's let's live 2000 years of, uh, ago you walk 15 kilometers to store water and keep it you had these camel sacks and you drank water your water consumption was limited to 1 2 liters a day maximum but water today in excess in these gallons and all. so we can argue on both sides of the coin i tell people look at your bio individuality every supplement has a side effect but every supplement has a healing power in it also the problem in today's world is people are self prescribing the problem in today's world the dietitians of the world know nothing about supplements doctors know nothing about supplements because they are not taught supplements in medical college in mbbs in md they do not learn about supplements they do drugs and pharmacology that is their prof- professional soundness but not coenzyme q10 not vitamin b complex not vitamin d and if dietitians are not being taught about it there is a vacuum and nobody is talking about this vacuum and this vacuum is silently being filled by the internet fashionably educating people that you need to take these things take it with a pinch of salt uh, we are talking about nootropics and how they can impact your brain and you also talked about omega 3 uh, for the brain uh, how does omega 3 impact our brain like you said 50% of it is omega 3 so do omega 3 supplements help are we as a country uh, with our diets deficient in omega 3 uh, and how do we increase our cognitive power so india is a superpower yes we need to increase our omega 3 you know i worked with olympic level uh, medals i worked with virat kohli i worked with uh, even the lady who broke the guinness world record of non stop aerobics in all of these the mental focus is the primary driver for me to win at the highest level 
So when I add so many things in the nootropic department after doing the medical test, the blood test, the genetic test, for example, omega-3 is found in flaxseed, in chia seed, uh, is found in fish oil supplements, our Indian mackerel, and my father told me, don't tell this on the podcast because you'll just raise the price of mackerels in India. Indian mackerel has got higher omega-3 than your Atlantic salmon. So our Indian mackerel is much more powerful in terms of the omega-3 levels. Now, a lot of us, when we do a gene test, we are deficient in the processing of the DHA uh, into the EPA. So there's a lot of science behind it. But yes, we need nutritional supplements. If you do the blood testing, you will find that most 90% of Indians are lowered. Now, people may argue that this part of the world never had omega-3s in the diet and we had the ability to produce it. But I feel that omega-3s taken in the diet can improve brain performance. What else? Phosphatidylserine, tryptophan. You know, tryptophan is an amino acid found in our diet. And when tryptophan is boosted, it increases serotonin, which helps the brain in terms of the calmness of the brain. In fact, shrooms, mushrooms and certain vegetables and all these things that they call psychedelics or nootropics actually have minute microscopic amounts of these nutritive molecules. For example, GABA, GABA amino butric acid. Glutamine is the number one amino acid, which is the base level for producing GABA, L-GABA. So if you want a restful sleep at night, a teaspoon of five grams of glutamine put into your post-workout walk can actually give you deeper sleep or alpha lipoic acid or for that matter, I can't believe I'm giving away some of the secrets. There is a, the uh, neurotransmitters, uh, phosphatidylserine and phosphatidylcholine. Now, research has shown that phosphatidylcholine drops 40% in marathon runners after a race. And when I enhance this uh, phosphatidylcholine, what happens is the person is not recovering after one week after a marathon. So imagine you run a marathon every day in your life mentally. 12.5% uh, of your brain uh, contains phosphatidyl serine or choline. I need to check this, but that, that was my equation of remembrance. I think I need phosphatidyl serine and phosphatidyl choline <laughs> I know, to remember it <laughs> to exactly. To sharpen your cognitive powers now. <laughs> and 7.5% is in the lungs. So if I'm an exercising athlete, I lose phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl choline, which are nootropics for my lungs and for my brain. So I need to nutritionally supplement it. Now, a techie guy listening into this will start popping phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl choline. Yes, it helps in your workout. It helps lower cholesterol, but too much of it can probably create a lipid imbalance in your blood tests. So we need to go very, very cautiously when we look at these nootropics, you know. For example, our ancient Indian haldi, haldi, which contains curcumin, is a good nootropic, which is why all of the top CEOs in Indian uh, and uh, global companies are the most powerful in the world today. India leads the world in uh, running these organizations because mm, our rice, our turmeric, our kichdi, our dal, our resam, all of these things have turmeric in it. So from that perspective, if you start adding and researching these molecules, it's great. Word of caution, when people are looking at psychedelics and looking at mushrooms that are not part of a standardized diet go easy you may create certain infections or allergic reactions in your gut which in a long-term basis may affect you so what you need to do is do a nutritional blood test of all your vitamins and minerals do a liver profile and a kidney profile blood test and if you're self-prescribing, which I do not endorse, but I know everybody thinks they're too smart on this planet, which they will anyway take it, they will then take that product after 45 days, do your liver and kidney function test. Again, if you see deranged parameters in your liver, there's a research paper, one case study, ashwagandha actually caused liver toxicity to a single patient. So now when I give ashwagandha, yes, it's good from a nootropic perspective, uh, boosting your testosterone, calming the mind, I feel we need to proceed with caution because there are not enough of human trials done on nootropics and nutritional supplements. A lot of them are lab animal studies. So we would use nootropics when somebody's brain is on the back foot or somebody's going to win a gold medal and is under guided medical advice.
you know, in fact, uh, I was reading this controversy theory by uh, Terence McKinnon, which talks about uh, the psychedelic plants that have helped us evolve eons ago. Uh, the the man, Homo erectus or something, he consumed psychedelic plants to let its brain grow to who we are today. So th there is, is, is there some truth to that or these are just theories floating around? Because these days kids are arguing, the younger generation is arguing about these psychedelic uh, plants or, or the natural form of, of these, let's say weed or grass or something like that. Yeah. If I'm, I can joke, if I can really joke about this and the youngsters can take the joke, Please do it. When I'm 70, 80 years of age, you will come to me with erectile dysfunction. You will come to me with liver problems, kidney problems, because not that the shrooms or the psychotropic mushrooms are bad. They're found in nature. But ancient man who did this and the sannyasis who did it, and they did it only under seasonal availability. Today, what are we doing? We're extracting it. We're concentrating it, giving you year-round availability. So we do not know mega dosing, 365-day year dosing, what it is doing to the body. So I would say take it with a pinch of salt. Yes, maybe if you're experimentable in nature, please do it. As I said earlier, do the blood test to watch your liver and kidney so it's not being toxic to your body. Do I agree that it takes your brain to the next level of transcendence and allows you to think at the next plane? Definitely yes. I'm not endorsing that you should smoke it up. But all of the nutritive molecules with a guided medical doctor or nutritionist can take you to the next level. You know, going to all these new fitness apps and nutrition apps, those are coming in. They are suggesting you to eat everything. You know, we'll make you lose 20 kgs in three months and you can eat everything. We allow you to eat pizzas and pastas and, and all of that. And a lot of my friends are very enticed with these advertisements and some of them have taken that as well. And they're like, you know what? My nutritionist allows me this also. So what is the truth to that? And uh, now talk about the portion control also here. How does that come into play? And if processed food should completely be avoided? Most of these apps, most of these startups, where the nutrition is led by technology is wrong. In today's day and age, maybe three, four, five years from now, when AI really gets into the bio-individuality of a person, then it will be correct. So let me give you an example. Most of these apps are funded they are driven. So I own my own nutrition clinic. It is very difficult to remain profitable. It is very difficult to invest in technology and get a standardized diet chart created for 10 or 15 patients that walk in every day. But what these apps do is they target thousands of people. They give one diet chart claimed to be done by artificial intelligence. But let me tell you something, unless you're capturing your blood test, Unless you're capturing your food recall, your cultural recall, your genetic test, maybe if you have a little bit more money, your microbiome or your gut analysis bacteria test and your omega-3 testing and put all of this together, you are actually getting a standardized diet plan. But this is good. I say that all these apps are really good because at least people are having awareness ki by let me at least start something. My mother or my dadima didn't give me a scientific diet plan. At least here these apps are giving me something of a timetable. What to eat, when to eat and how much to eat. I think if people start that, it gets them to a nice place. So it's like saying, Pehla uh, tumhe Maruti 800 lega. So then you learn and then you upgrade your car, you upgrade your car. So the apps I take with a pinch of salt. So when my own friends come to me, it's like, Mr. Fernando, you're really expensive, you know, and your dietitians are very expensive. I actually ask people, which is the most expensive item you own? They'll be saying laptop, phone. Nowadays, phones are one and a half lakh rupees. But the human body, na, Shobha, your body, Shobha, my body is the most expensive real estate we will ever own. So three years ago, when I wanted to buy a German luxury vehicle and my EMI was going to be 1.5 lakhs a month, I went and bought a simple car and that extra one lakh, I diverted into a yoga trainer, a nutritionist, a karate sir, and a strength and conditioning trainer and a chef to cook me good food once or twice a month. So I call my friends to my house and we have more nutritious food. That is because I believe my body is more valuable than a Louis Vuitton bag or a Gucci bag or an Apple iPhone or a Mercedes-Benz car. 
I am the most expensive real estate. So I need India to wake up and instead of spending money on foreign brands and everything else, aap khud ka brand dekh lijiye, your own personal thing and start eating with a plan. And this plan can be done with a dietitian. Who is a dietitian? Is a medical type of nutrition prescriber who can work in a hospital. You know, I'm a nutritionist. I can't work in a hospital. So I have an entire team of dietitians working with me. So go to a dietitian, go to a nutritionist or ask your doctor, please tell me who's the medical dietitian tied up with you. Why doctor? Because I would say one thing with a pinch of salt. Doctors know nothing about nutrition. Because I studied at Goa Medical College. I did my clinical biochemistry in Goa Medical College. It's a teaching hospital for doctors. And in the first year of, M uh, of MBBS, the first year of MSc student goes together with the MBBS doctor. Nutrition is six papers. Six papers, six hours in the entire MBBS. My mother knows more about nutrition than a doctor. So the thought process is your doctor cannot give you a dietary advice. So this is where people are making mistakes in today's world. But do you know who the best nutritionists are? The best nutritionists are when you decide to learn for yourself. And I believe mothers become the best nutritionists on the planet because they slowly start learning, 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 reading, reading, reading and begin to change the food in their house. So that's where we can start. Ryan, I would also like to ask you the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian. Like you said that these are also two, you know, different uh, kind of professions and one deals with something and the other entails something else. So what is the clear cut difference between a nutrition and dietitian? A lot of us uh, go to dietitian when we want to kind of work on our diets. Um, I know that nutrition is, is something else. So where should one go and what should be your kind of path to get into uh, healthy nutrition for yourself? So there are two parts, okay? One part is that where do people study? Uh, dietitians. It's the field of dietetics, which is the study of nutrition. And most people will do a bachelor's in nutrition or home science and nutrition and then move on into a master's degree. Now, the dietitian is authorized to practice in a hospital because the medical accuracy is at the highest level. So when you have to give a patient who has a clinical issue. What do I mean by clinical issue? You could have gone in for surgery. You could have diabetes, hypertension. You could be an ICU patient. You could be a cancer patient. So such people are dietitians. They are formally qualified. What is the difference between qualified and certified? Certified means you have a uh, Google engineer also doing a six-month course in nutrition and they get certification in nutrition. So dietitians... Dietitians are not certified, they're qualified. So I would go to a dietitian. In fact, my personal diet plan is done by Suhasini, who's my head of department of dietetics. She makes my diet plan. Whenever I sit with, with any of the film stars, like right now I'm working with Mr. Uh, Abe Diol, I'm working with Anupam Kerji, their charts are being planned with my dietitian. So who's a nutritionist? A nutritionist is a science qualified graduate who will do one or two years of a nutrition certification or nutrition course. The benefit of having a nutritionist is they can see the overall gamut of a picture. But if you ask me a very cheeky question, who's better? I would say even though I'm a nutritionist, a dietitian is even better than me because that's the person who can treat you medically. But in sports nutrition, now the world is also getting sports dietitians and sports nutritionists. And the crown of gold medal is always held by a dietitian. You know, Ryan, when we talk about dietitians or nutritions or balancing our diets or switching to healthy meals, our parameter to measure what we are eating is calories. Now, all calories are not the same. Uh, the calories that you get from, let's say, 100 calories from an apple are not same as 100 calories from a samosa or something like that, right? So how does one factor in these uh, you know, how does one factor in uh, the different kind of calories once you're designing your own diet? Or how does one develop this inherent intelligence where, uh, you know, whatever calorie charts you have read online and stuff, but you're still able to see what is better for your gut, what is better for your body? So, uh, for India needs to understand it from this perspective. Imagine calories like children in a classroom. Some children are noisy, some children are stubborn, some children are geniuses, some children are creative, some, ch some children daydream, some children can't write but can paint. Food is based on protein, carbs, fats, vitamins and minerals. These five uh, ingredients 
make up the component of a food. We are getting confused today when all of these processed so-called healthy foods come in. You know, I have hundreds of people walking into this nutrition counseling room of mine. And these hundreds of people that come in are all food manufacturers. Sir, our product is healthy. Sir, my product is good. I choose to endorse a few products because of the nutritional convenience it gives my client because they are nutritionally indisciplined. But Shobha, let's not mince words. Food coming in from nature, not processed, that is it doesn't go through a factory and put into a plastic bag, is the pure food. So those are the most valuable calories that you can get. I'll give you a very uh, simple example. Glass of milk, cup of curd, tablespoon of ghee. Which is most processed is ghee because you have to extract it. The moment man puts his hand to processing something, I think we are working on the taste bud pleasure, mouthfeel pleasure and forgotten what evolution in nature has given us from a perspective of this is natural, which means the glass of milk is better. The curd is also better because you have not touched it. It is fermented on its own with bacteria. But the moment you boil it and you separate it and you extract the butter or the ghee, now that's processing. Now take this to a thing like potato chips. Do you know I prescribe potatoes to children? But I don't prescribe french fries because french fries is now processing it in oil. And I don't give a packet of chips because now that is processed, fried, baked, put into a plastic bag with salt, with preservative and then coming to you 16 months later. So if people can understand this, the first journey they can ask. People ask me, sir, tell me which is the healthiest food. No, 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 no. One food shoba for you is a thumbs up. Pyar se. It's so good for you. Like for me, I can tell you that broccoli does lovely pyar se to me. But if I eat milk, it gives me one thuppat and I get all my acne. So nobody told me in college that I'm allergic to gluten and acne. So now you will say to me, but chapati is very good. Eat chapatis for calorie. So let's not make this mistake, Shobha, and let's not make this mistake, India. When we say that all calories can be consumed anyhow, it doesn't matter. When it comes from nature, the calories better. When it comes without being processed, it is better. We are eating too much of processed foods. And if you go with nature, I believe you can't overeat. How much of broccoli can you eat? How much of apple can you eat? How much of vegetable can you eat? Right? But when we go into the grain, G-R-A-I-N, we can overeat our grain, which is calorie dense. Calorie dense means you take one peda, you take one apple, you take one bowl of rice. Each one of them will have different amount of calories. Each one is processed differently. So knowing calorie density will help you in maintaining how much food you need to eat. And that is the second problem people have. Nobody, including me, knows on a day-to-day -day base, time-to-time -time basis, breakfast to breakfast, lunch to lunch, dinner to dinner, how much of calories should I be taking at that moment. So things like the exercise variables that we wear, all of these exercise variables, give us a ballpark picture of how much of expenditure we are doing. And Shobha, you are a DJ, I am a DJ. Desk jockey. Right. So our grandfathers and our great grandfathers needed bowls of grains, chapati or rice or millets or whatever it is. They ate bowls of it. So we ate this much of grain, this much of dal and this much of sabzi. The world now right. needs to go to this much of sabzi, this much of dal and only this much of grain. And that is where your calorie equation will be won. Right. Like you said that whatever is coming directly from the nature, you know, it also comes in a form that you really can't go beyond a certain level to eat it. Let's say a glass of milk, like you said, one can eat maybe a lot of ghee by putting it into different desserts or, or you know, cooking it in different manners. You could still go a cup full of ghee in a day and you won't realize it. Whereas you can't go a cup or two beyond that for milk. So the natural foods also, you can't go beyond a certain quantity, like body wise, your body doesn't accept them. Uh, but once you process them and you, 
device your own methods of you know cooking it in a manner that it appeals your taste buds then you can really go over the board with the quantity as well like you said one tablespoon ghee quantity is more than enough but uh, if you put it into desserts you're like consuming let's say 10 tablespoon of it or something in just uh, one piece of dessert so that's a beautiful way of you putting it in because from what you've just mentioned to me shobha you have now understood clearly so tomorrow when you go home you'll be understanding that okay is this food worthy to enter my body second how much have i burnt today and this food is worthy from a quality perspective to enter my body then this food is worthy from a quantity perspective meaning uh, i can eat so much of rice today or chapati or no i didn't do much of uh, calorie work expenditure so i need to do lesser i think as technology comes in uh, our phones like all these trackers have come and will be able to watch what we are eating and then it will tell me mr ryan fernando today you sat down whole day and shobhas podcast you didn't do many steps in fact your target was 6000 steps you did only 2000 steps so because you went on shobhas podcast please eat some salad please have one cucumber and uh, eat only 3 tablespoons of rice that's going to be the future but what happens is oh i worked very hard today my brain got expended on shobhas podcast so you know uh, let me eat I, i did a good job in the podcast let me eat eat eat, eat. so now the liver says hey bhai you gave me so much of carbohydrate the the transition of carbohydrate to fat is in the liver this is why india is going to become the next fatty liver capital of the world if you're not already there i can see doctors i recently delivered a lecture to a, a, to the national symposium of doctors in goa in october of 2023 and fortunately for me they don't allow anybody except doctors to sit in that lecture right but i was a previous speaker and i was not a doctor i sat in and the lecture before me was about fatty liver and i was shocked to understand that pollution causes fatty liver roadside food causes fatty liver because of the contamination of the hepatitis c vaccine there's no hygiene on our road food today so today when i see people at roadside stands eating momos and golgappes and all people ask me are you worried about the calories i'm worried about the unhygienic factor which is going on and slapping your liver and not to mention that these foods are created with monosodium glutam- glutamate which is literally a cheating mistress trying to tempt you to eat that food and uh, eat more and more of it every day and all it's doing is going inside and slapping your body so what is the truth to cooking all of these things that we get on roadside let's say golgappas and whatever else we get chaat and different street foods cooking at home people say cook at home it's healthier and you can eat then uh, without worrying about uh, about it of course you have to still portion control but how healthy is it because like you said there are certain substances and chemicals you're adding to it even while you're cooking it at home uh, you're adding your sodas you're adding different you know powders etc to it so doesn't it also become like a k- kind of a processed food even when you're making it at home first of all the flour that you're getting is also processed right so i mean this is an argument somebody who would say that okay since my home food is evil let me eat the outside evil food uh, to simplify that argument i will say there are levels of evil right you eat an apple there's almost zero evil in it but somebody will come and say mr fernando the apple is coated with va- with wax so okay there's one level of evil now i take that same apple and i make an apple pie at home and then i go outside and have an apple pie my family household help when they make the apple pie have a can you get organic apple a can you get some organic flour oh ryan fernando's gluten sensitive let's make it with gluten free flour uh, ryan doesn't like too much of sugar so put lesser sugar no no we want you sugar we'll use organic jaggery jaggery and sugar is the same thing but normal recipe in the market says 15 tablespoons of sugar for this big apple pie for a pe- for six people we will use only 5 t- five tablespoons of sugar when i go to the restaurant chef is like are yaar to 20 tablespoons of sugar don't buy cheap uh, don't buy expensive flour and all use cheapest flour ashen flour so the uh, apples come in that guy is cutting the apple uh, where is boss he didn't get my salary so he's cutting it with all the bad energy sorry people in my house are cutting it with love we don't talk about the quantum energy signature upon the food the people that grow it and the people that prepare it i'm going to go on a mission to try and convince farmers to grow Uh, crops in a lot of love you know so when the farmers agitate i feel very hurt because we should protect our farmers we should pay more for the food they give us you know how difficult it is to grow broccoli 
I tried to grow broccoli on my penthouse terrace and it did not come out. So today when I eat my food, I eat every morsel because I respect that farmer sending that food to me at only 300 rupees per kg. But I will go and watch a movie for 1500 rupees. So food at the restaurant level is getting evil because we are pandering to the taste buds of people, not the nutritive element. You know, I like how you brought in the concept of energy of the person who is cooking also into factor. Because uh, 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 when we when we talk about doctors or when we talk about uh, at the intellectual level, maybe it makes sense or maybe it doesn't. But uh, but like you said, that it, it does make a lot of sense that how a person is cooking is feeling at that time, and uh, you know, taking into that uh, uh, taking that into account can also help us uh, kind of improve our relationship with food or something like that, or uh, what we are. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So uh, when I was at this medical conference teaching the doctors about the, the nuances of nutrition in today's day and age, genetic testing, microbiome testing, omega testing, how do we marry it to a diet plan? Uh, and then I asked a very cheeky question. I was like, how many of you doctors in this audience carry a tiffin box to your hospital, which has a canteen serving patients and doctors? And I had more than 60% of the audience raise their hand. So Shobha, intellectuals will understand I need my body to operate at the highest efficiency. And Amir Khan has his own caterer, chef, tiffin box coming in. When I did Shahid Kapoor's diet, every one of his meals were delivered to his trailer, in spite of there being a buffet table over there. Why? Because you have this knowledge that food prepared by my hand, maybe not by my personal hand, but my team's purchasing, my cook loves me. Like today, my uh, housekeeping lady, Mona, prepared me coffee. And I told my wife, Mona makes the best coffee in the world. I go anywhere else. The coffee comes expensive. 800 rupees for a cup of coffee in some of these stupid hotels. But Mona's right. coffee, which is vegan, coconut uh, milk with uh, the most expensive uh, organic Araku cafe that I buy from here in South India. Is that, uh, Wow the quantum energy signature. Now you can only understand this when you're vibrating at the level saying, my body is the most expensive real estate. So even when I drink water, my water is the most expensive water. And when I see youngsters partying like, yeah, I have this alcohol, I have that Japanese alcohol, I have this alcohol. I'm like, fine, that's the best alcohol. My, my alcohol, if I have is only 30 ml once in a month, and it's 45,000 rupees for a bottle. Because I'll just put it for the taste and the vibrational element. I'm not endorsing alcohol here. What I'm trying to tell people is, whatever you put into your body, it should be like prasad. And if you are a god and you're receiving prasad into your body, if your disciple put the wrong prasad, would you be angry with that person? And who is the disciple putting prasad into your body? You yourself. You know, there's a question of affordability also here, uh, Ryan. Uh, what happens is, particularly in India, we have not conditioned ourselves at a mindset level to spend on good nutrition or good food. You know, like you said, 300 rupees of a broccoli would, would sound so expensive to us instead of putting 700 on a movie ticket or something like that or 800 for a glass of wine or something like that. You know, so how does one prepare themselves on a mindset level to really kind of go towards nutrition and spend their money on nutrition? Some of us who are, let's say, who have their basics sorted or who are, you know, uh, uh, so to say, in a little uh, above the average income group, they still are kind of understanding this because they have the money, they would want to spend it on the best for them that they are ingesting in their body. But the people who are still in the middle class, but I see that th they are spending on other experiences. Let's say it's a vacation, it's, an, it's a weekend uh, hangout or party with friends or house parties. They're spending equally or, you know, in, in some manner quite uh, exorbitantly also there, if I, if I may say. Uh, but when it comes to nutrition, everyday nutrition, then we kind of cut corners. <laughs> you know, like I, I was having this conversation with uh, one of my friends and we were talking about ghee. Like you said, it's pretty expensive. So that's A2 ghee now, there, there are a bunch of categories and you get it up to like 4,000 rupees a kg. So for, for somebody to think of that, because, and they can afford it. If they can afford, let's say 10,000 rupees on a house party, they rightly can afford that on a, on a, you know, a liter of ghee that they are going to be consuming for the entire month. How does one bring out this uh, shift on a mindset level? So there are two parts to your question. One is the affordability mindset. And the other one is the intent mindset. 
let me go with the intent mindset you don't need to be rich you don't need to be above middle class to first say that my body is the most expensive real estate the three vectors for great health in a poor man and a rich man is sleep exercise and diet sleep does not cost money exercise does not cost money i agree with you that the diet mindset can be categorized into affordability but now for all the people poor middle class or rich this is what i have to say to you as ryan fernando you select the food and put it into your body when we look at the consumer survey of the average of india using 100 rupees around 25 years ago 56 or 57 rupees went towards food which means disposable income now has gone up and it has come down to 40 rupees for food but ma'am in this 40 rupees i already said that 10 rupees 56 paisa or 50 paisa goes towards processed foods and beverages and only 3 rupees 80 paisa goes towards vegetables and 3 rupees 80 paisa goes towards fruit the intent the intent comes from awareness and when we are not aware that our body is the most expensive real estate we put it out of our mind yesterday i had an interview with some of the top most ceos of the leading hospital in india and they are working on the preventive healthcare model and they were talking to me that families are willing to give any amount of money once a person is diagnosed with a threatening lifestyle disease like diabetes hypertension heart attack stenting uh, fatty liver uh, colon cancer b- breast cancer they are willing to spend lakhs of rupees even if they are poor a shared incident with you i had one of my housekeepings in my office go to a private office when there is a world class government hospital here in bangalore so when people say they are poor and they don't have money when they get sick they want to go to private practice why because they believe they'll get the best care over there that is a mindset for a person to change his mindset you and i are doing an awareness nutrition is cheap you just need to have the intent to go and hunt for the right foods i can make you a protein powder from basic chana rajma powder sattu powder and still make it like a protein powder of 30 to 40 grams of protein under 50 rupees now if you tell me that urban india is okay but rural india is poor i think our podcast is being watched by mostly people who can afford a smartphone absolutely and they are in they are in that audience which i am communicating to that when you decide to buy your next phone don't invest all that money in an expensive phone because you're only saying hi hello and watching uh, this podcast at the end of the day but what you put into your body requires a seismic mind shift a 100 rupee cadbury bar to a pun in a government office to a software engineer to a ceo and to anil ambani have the same price tag the affordability mindset lies in the person removing the wallet and giving the money don't give your money to outside food give your money to home cooked food don't give your money to processed foods give your money to fruits and vegetables this is my advice to people have the intent change and pricing hey you can't afford organic food get the food home wash it better make friends with your local farmers everybody who lives in urban india comes from a gaon i come from a gaon called sharao in goa i have already contracted the farmers over there to grow my own rice but sir uh, we are going to charge you 500 rupees per kg of organic rice you know what what's the entire cost of your field okay so much i'll buy the entire cost of your field and i'm going to sell this rice for you and you keep all the profits because you know what i don't want to drive the german luxury vehicle i am driving already my luxury vehicle this intent i want from people in india 
I really hope so that uh, the intent towards nutrition, the mindset towards nutrition, and in fact towards learning, towards educating themselves, uh, towards watching good content that can really feed their brain with 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 some uh, good stuff. You know where the intent also starts to shift slowly because it's not a one day game. You and I could be talking and you could be giving away the best possible information in the best possible manner, but yet the intent shifting, mindset shifting takes time. So I would also encourage our viewers to to you know kind of watch. things that kind of build your mindset towards learning more towards upgrading yourself your mindset more and slowly st- slowly when you start bringing out the shift like initially everything is tough we were talking about the importance of uh, sleep and uh, exercising initially everything is tough uh, coordinating and regulating your sleep is so tough maintaining a regular exercise uh, schedule which comes for free which is such an integral and important part of maintaining your body comes for free that also we can't do so it's really not a question of money for a lot of us especially the ones who are watching this podcast for us it's it's largely a question of intent and i think instead of name calling each other or putting you know comments like uh, ki you have the money so you're talking like this we should really reflect upon our own lives and in our own wallets and see where we are spending our money even if you're earning lesser then also you can have quality nutrition maybe you won't have broccolis and zucchinis of the world but there is also still other nutrition that you can kind of incorporate kaddu loki brinjal avalakai uh uh patte gobi all of these things yeah. w- prepared well reduce your rice quantity dals can be better masoor dal tur dal chana rajma in the vegetarian department you don't need to eat more calories india even in the poor level today people who are getting one square meal or two square meals are overeating on the oils and the carbohydrate hence the diabetic capital of the world so this intent of awareness needs to move drastically otherwise we are going to have the youngest population in the world but the sickest population in the world i think that is what we are kind of at the cusp at uh, uh, i feel that uh, nutrition and uh, the the health is becoming such a challenge for us and not just the physical health but also our mental health emotional health you know through this podcast the journey within uh, ryan we also try to spread the message of taking the journey within to understand your inner world where you build your uh, perspective about life where you process your thoughts feelings emotions and events in your life and this perspective is often what what is it it is your mindset So we're trying to kind of empower the mindsets of people through this podcast. Ran, you're talking about bio individuality, and uh, earlier we were talking about preventive healthcare. So when we talk about preventive healthcare, bio individuality and understanding of who you are, body wise, nutrition wise, is extremely important. So uh, give me a few tips here. How does one understand their own bio individuality, and if there are any tests that you would like to recommend uh, to people, or is there any 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 paths that you'd like to chart out a simple path where people can get closer to understanding their own bio individuality so bio individuality from the sleep behavior the exercise behavior and the diet behavior I'll quickly give it to you sleep behavior figure out if you're a morning owl or a late night but get 7 hours of sleep no matter what time you go to sleep that's the first bio individuality figure out which part of the day suits you morning or night in the exercise some people are marathon runners some people are sprinters some people can lift heavy some people can lift light but go long in terms of uh, a 5 kg dumbbell and you can do 300 repetitions but somebody can lift 300 kg and do only 5 repetitions figure out your bio individuality in exercise third in diet no food is always healing for everyone for example I, when i wanted to put on weight in college everyone said drink 5 liters of milk but that caused all my adult acne and only when i did a food allergy test and the genetic test did i discover i am not supposed to eat dairy which is cow milk and the only milk on the planet i can actually have is camel milk so bio individuality can be tested from what we call as a food intolerance blood test bio individuality without any of this natak and gyan of ryan fernando can be done in a simple way eat one type of food for 3 days as soon as you eat the food ask your mouth how it feels is there any tingling is there any dryness <laughs> uh, some of this uh, all this uh, kujli wala sensation happens in your throat then you feel a little bit acidic after eating it in 15 20 minutes 3 hours later is your stomach hurting these are clear signs this food has given you a thappot but if it goes through you very nice in 4 to 5 hours and next day aapka potty brilliant hai 
then the buy and individuality of the food is very good. But next day you have gas, you have smelly potty, you have explosive bowel movement, then something is wrong in the food you've eaten. So this is a non-clinical diagnostic way of even just discovering your own bio-individuality. In fact, all our parents and our grandparents have figured out their bio-individuality. Have you ever gone for a party and the old person says, I will not eat this food, I will exactly. eat only this food because years of try. Years of trial and error, they've figured out their bio So this is the greatest way to find out your own bio-individuality bio is keep small notes. What agrees with me? What doesn't agree with me? Or if you have a little bit of money, don't spend that on the next new phone that you're going to buy. Put some of it into a food intolerance test. Like I use celery juice to detox. But in this year's food allergy test, I had so much of celery last year, which I'm not supposed to do. And now my food allergy says celery is not good for you. So seasonality also works because of global year round availability of eating potatoes or rice or like me taking celery. One year I had orange juice throughout the year. I got allergic to orange juice. One year I ate mangoes throughout the whole year. I got allergic to mangoes. So I've begun to understand rotational and seasonality works well in bioindividuality also. Right. Uh, Ryan, you were talking about our parents, how they understood their body through trial and error. I think it needs acute observation. And the reason our parents did this acute observation of what they're ingesting and how it is making them feel is also because they didn't want to depend on medication. So like, I don't want to take a pill. So let me observe what I'm eating and what's not suiting my body. Now, the problem with our generation is that I'm not saying that we are friendly to pills, but we are we, we are not acutely observant of what we are putting in our body. And, and in a way we are, you know, let's say you go to a party and you you have a hangover or you have acidic uh, reaction in your body, you have acid reflux, next day you pop a pill and you're sorted. You have a severe headache from let's say loud music or uh, talking continuously for long hours, next day you pop a pill and you're all right. So I think that is also one important factor one must consider to understand their bio-individuality. Absolutely. And Shobha, if I can add one more point, our grandparents and parents didn't have that much of distraction. Like my father said, we didn't have TV. You had Durdashan. And your, your child has uh, 42 uh, cartoon channels. And we have Netflix CEO saying we are on a battle with sleep. The time available to introspect, the time available to think about yourself and your family is now being robbed by the distractions to everything else. So from that perspective, it really goes to saying that the new generation will be educated by the external stimulus of the internet rather than going inwardly the ancient Indian way and meditating or praying and figuring out what works for you or what doesn't work for you. You know, that is what we are trying to do with this podcast here, Ryan. We are trying to help people understand the importance of taking the journey within because understanding our bio-individuality, like everything about life, I feel boils down to what is your understanding of who you are deep inherently within yourself and how you process things, how your body processes things. So once we go back to this journey within, you know, I've spoken to so many specialists on this podcast, including yourself and people from various walks of life one thing that i've understood and one thing that is common between every story is that you have to introspect and reflect upon and see where you're building this perspective about about life whether it's an empowering one or is a dispowering one whether it's working for you or it's not working for you all of that the the answers to that are within are we digging deeper are we scratching deep within enough to understand what is our individual biochemistry bio individuality all these fancy terms can come and go and can keep changing every five years you know earlier they used to say biochemistry Mystery. Now they're saying bio-individuality. Five years later, they will coin some other term. These will come and go. But but the basics of it remains the same. Like you're saying that understanding that taking an advice from anybody else, the external advice, whether it's from the internet or whether it's your friends telling you that have milk and that will sort you out. But you're discovering for yourself that it's just not working for you. So all of these things, I think we have to really understand the importance of connecting with our own self, our truest self, and take out some time out for just that to that. Ryan, on the parting note, I want to come to my last question uh, that I keep for all the guests. And I typically ask them about their definition of success because you all are such accomplished people. You've seen so much in your life. And, uh, you know, with, with our age, with wisdom, with the life that we see, our experiences, we come to a very tailor-made definition of success that works for us. And I feel these are the real definitions of success because we all navigate through the societal definitions of success to arrive at a point where we have to, kind of like we're talking about bio-individuality, we to construct an individual definition which is a more practical definition so i usually take uh, you know my guest input on that here i want to add another angle to it and that is that how do you define success for a common indian nutrition wise 
a person can discover their own bio individuality start with that journey you don't need to become a virat kohli and get the fame and then start taking care of your health each one of us are celebrities in our own life our body is the most expensive real estate and once you come to that realization work with sleep exercise and food and when you talk about food take dal chawal roti from a simple level to a chandrayaan level that is launch it into orbit because i think if people just understand the science behind what to eat when to eat and how much to eat they have already won the game of life and do you know longevity comes in eating lesser longevity comes in putting better quality foods into your body longevity comes from being spiritual about what you do so let's go back to our roots eat less but eat with a science eat with a gratitude that allows that food to vibrate at the highest level of energy and nutrition inside of your body yeah, so don't eat with greed or other emotions influencing you understand your bio individuality who you are from deep within understand how your body is functioning and that is when we'll be able to build a successful uh, healthy body nutrition wise and one final point before we leave each other it's okay to have a reward meal but make sure that your reward meal is truly a reward meal and you're not feeling guilty about it but don't have a ratio of more than 30% of reward meals in your life which could be sinful so try and construct your reward meals to be more nutritive go to a maximum level of 30% and the remaining 70% of your nutrition should be boring should be home cooked should be organic and should take you to that next level statistically become better is what i'm telling india those are some very uh, organic beautiful and pragmatic takeaways from this conversation i i'm really happy that you could spare out some time ryan and we could have this conversation i'm really hopeful that this will help india eat better sleep better exercise better and heal better thank you so much for joining me on the journey within podcast thank, thank you thank you for having me shobha bye bye look forward to seeing you soon so please subscribe to the channel like comment and share because your interaction with our content your engagement with our content tells the youtube algos that we are doing something meaningful here and that is when youtube decides to send us out or spread us out to a wider audience thank you for your support i'll see you in the next episode of the journey within my name is shobha rana namaste and have a great day